So folks, feel free to stop me if you have questions. But again, this is just one potential workflow. This is how I work with our markdown. But you folks have to figure out what works for you. So I'm going to go here. All right. So all right. Let's say I'm going to start something called class notes. I'll go here, file, new, R markdown, right? Just create a new R markdown document. And I'll call it class notes. Okay? And I will save it as class notes. And how can you do that? You can click on this icon here for save. That is a computer disk from when I was younger. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, that is a computer disk indicating save. And let me just save it somewhere. Class notes, downloads, there we go. All right. So I'm going to delete what's in that template. And for example, today's lecture six. Right. The first neat feature of our markdown documents is uh, adding a code block, right? Now, you can either type tick, 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 blah, 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 blah. No. Go here, click on R. It adds a code block. Everybody see that? I went to here, click on R. You could add different kinds of code. We're not going to cover that in this class, but you could just add a code block there. Now, watch this. So, remember, folks, that the first thing you got to do whenever working in a chapter is load all the packages. If you don't do this, these three loadings, things will not work. So I'll copy that. I believe that went to my clipboard. I will paste it here. All right. Now watch this. If I cr click that green play button here, it's going to take that code, copy it down here, and run it. So watch what I'm going to do. Play. Everybody see that? It's as if I copied and pasted that code here, moved my cursor down here, and pasted it and ran it. You can click on the play button. Now, what is the benefit of doing things this way is that, okay, I only need to copy the code once. Why? Because I can save it. I don't have to retype it every single time here or repost it every single time. You write it once and it's saved forever. Any questions? Right here. Why is it red? Um, isn't red supposed to be tarot? So remember folks, in what we said in chapter one, that unfortunately the way our studio gives feedback, it's always in red. But as long as you don't see the word error, things are working. If you see the word warning, it's just saying, oh hey, just pay attention to this, but things still worked. But then when there's no error or warning, it's just like, sometimes it just outputs stuff like that. So yes, uh, it is a little jarring, ah, red, but that is, a, that is how R markdown, oh, sorry, R tells you what it's doing. Any other questions? All right, cool, cool, cool. So let me do another one here. Let me add another block here, okay? And I'm going to copy and paste the code, uh, where was it, that created, sorry, sorry, all right, I'm going to copy that, I'll paste it here, and then I'll copy the code that made the plot. Okay, so remember folks, you have to run everything in sequence, so I ran this, now I'm going to run this, what comes out? Ah, the plot. You can save everything in your R Markdown document. So watch what happens. You have one window that corresponds to the uh, plot, but then you also have in this window, going to your question, uh, just a little warning. Hey, five of the rows were not plotted because they had missing values. All right, but now watch this. What if I add a new piece of code that says, okay, show me the contents of Alaska flights. If I paste that down there, now it's doing three things, right? Make the plot, oh sorry, create this, make the plot, 
show me the table. If I press play, there's going to be a third box that shows up here. Play. All right. Here's the, here's the plot. Here's the warning. And there's the table. Okay. Questions? Uh, it, it is a take. You are basically saying as if you're doing this, as if I'm taking this code. So show me the contents of Alaska flights. So if I go down here and I type Alaska flights, see, it just shows me the values. So it's basically mimicking what would happen if you ran it down here. Okay. Over here. So again, uh, in this case here, if you just type the name Alaska Flights, it'll do sort of like a, a data dump or a data vomit, right? It just spits it out, but it's not very user friendly. That's where, in my opinion, the view is just a lot better. Because if you go down here and type view Alaska Flights, then you can like see all the columns like that, right? You can, oh, hint, 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 sort the columns, and also get this. Let's say you, you're, you're a big fan of LaGuardia Airport. Well, I don't know why you'd be that, but okay. Uh, okay, so you go here, LGA. Wait, what's the code for LaGuardia? Oh no, it's only Alaska flights, I'm sorry. So let's say you're a big fan of uh, Seattle, or I think Portland? Oh no, there's only one flight to Alaska. Let me get a better example. Uh, okay, let's say you only want, uh, here we go. Day. You don't want all 32 days. You only want January the 16th. You can do very simple filtering. So again, no data wrangling necessary. You can just do it all with the interface like that. Very simple stuff. You can do all there. Great question. Anybody else? Right here. If you closed our studio, you do need to reload it. And folks, oh, that's a great segue or a connector to this next thing. I'm going to make the font bigger here. Watch this. Run all. Let's say you don't want, let's say you have 10,000 code chunks and you don't want to press play, 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 play. You can press run all, it'll run everything for you. So that's definitely a useful feature too. Again, folks, I'm going to put this video online, so don't worry if you like that was a little quick. All right. One more thing here. Let me do another thing. If you press this button here, what does it say? It runs all chunks above. So if you press that button, it's going to run everything above it. Because maybe you don't want to run everything. You only want to run all the sequences above it. Questions? All right, one more tip and that's enough for now. Cause like if I told you all the tips right now, it would be not useful, all right? You learn these things as you go. In fact, I'm still learning tips as you go. The last thing is, let's say you don't, let's say you have the code that looks like this and you don't want to run the whole code chunk. You only want to run a specific highlighted section. Watch what I'm gonna do here. I'll highlight it on a Mac, Press Command Enter. On a Windows computer, press Control Enter. Watch what happens when I run that. It'll only run that part of the code. Notice, it's only spitting out the table. It's not running everything. It's only highlighting, running the sub portion of code that you've highlighted. All right, questions? Right here. Uh, this, uh, this oh, 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 you want to have all three of those things show up. Oh, yeah, just go back here and press play. Yeah. All right, great questions. Anybody else? Okay, now, here's another thing that is not based on R, but this is a crucial tool to have in a data scientist toolbox. Screenshots, folks. Now, 
It is so much less work to take a screenshot instead of taking a photo with your phone and then uploading that. So on a window, I put instructions for Windows on the web page. I can't do a demo because I don't have a Windows computer, but I'm going to do it on a Mac, folks. If you have a Mac, folks, press Command Shift 3. Did everybody see what just happened? Screenshot. So no taking a picture and uploading it. You can directly grab what's on the screen. Let me do that again from somewhere else. Let me go to uh, Slack. Command Shift 3. That comes up. Super useful. Last trick. Let's say you have, you don't want to share your entire screen, but you only want to share a sub portion of the screen. Everybody, for those of you on a Mac, Command Shift 4. And then Highlights. And I'm putting Benjamin on blast right here. Hope he doesn't mind. You can get just the sub portion like that. These are all tools that you learn to use as a data scientist, folks, especially when you're asking questions. Super useful to be able to take screenshots. Okay, and I've included instructions on Windows. I believe it's a tool called Clip It or Snippy or Snip. Uh, it's just uh, Shift S, I think, something like that. But again, it's on that. Uh, it's on the course webpage. All right. Any final questions? Well, for example, if you have some code output that you just don't, uh, you want to share with somebody, and you uh, and you want to show them your work, you can just very quickly send a screenshot so they can see what your computer looks like. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? All right, uh, I'm going to stop the video right now and post it to YouTube uh, during the uh, in-class exercises.